Hey, this is Jeremy with My Career Tech here with another online course for your Career Tech classroom. And today's lesson is part of a two part series on the automotive electrical system. In this video, we'll be introducing the starting and charging systems. Before we dive in, we'll review a brief history of the automotive electrical system and how it relates to the modern day vehicle. Let's get started. The electrical system in vehicles first began to be introduced in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. One of the key milestones in the development of the electrical system was the invention of the electrical ignition system by Charles F. Kettering in 1910. However, it wasn't until the 1920s and 30s that electrical systems became more common and integrated into vehicles. During this time, advancements such as electric starters, electric lighting systems, and electrical generators, which later evolved into alternators, were introduced. Prior to the adoption of electrical systems, vehicles relied on manual methods for starting the engine, such as hand cranking, and they used gas lamps or oil lamps for lighting. The gradual integration of electrical systems in vehicles brought significant improvements in convenience, reliability, and safety. Over the years, the electrical systems in vehicles have become increasingly complex, incorporating various components, such as the lighting subsystem and computer systems to power and control the wide range of electrical features and functions in modern automobiles. Today, the electrical system in a vehicle is a complex network of components, wires, switches, and modules that power and control various electrical functions. These include the battery, starter motor, alternator, wiring, fuse box, switches, sensors, control modules, entertainment and communication systems, and the lighting system. Electrical systems in a vehicle can be compared to your body. The vehicle's generator, also known as the alternator, operates similar to the heart. It pushes electricity through wires around the vehicle like your heart pushes blood through veins around your body. With this comparison in mind, you can imagine electricity's role in a modern vehicle is crucial for it to operate. Let's take a closer look at one of the main parts of the vehicle's electrics, the starting system. The starter system is the part of the vehicle that is responsible for starting the engine and contains both mechanical and electrical parts. A basic starter system is made up of an ignition switch, battery, battery cables, starter motor, starter solenoid or relay, a starter drive and flywheel ring gear, and finally a neutral safety switch. Let's discuss how each of these components work when a vehicle is starting up. The ignition switch is the power distribution point for most vehicles. This is where a car key or push to start function is within the vehicle. When the push to start is activated or the key is turned, the switch triggers the main electrical system, which is powered by the battery. The battery supplies power to the rest of the vehicle by converting chemical energy to electrical energy. This is done in the anode, which is the negatively charged side of the battery that contains electrons. The battery is now fully charged and it's responsible for carrying current to the rest of the vehicle where electricity is needed. First, electricity is transferred to the starter motor through battery cables. The starter motor spins the engine a few times to allow the engine to draw in a mixture of fuel and air to get it running. The battery cables, which are large, multi-stranded wire, carry high currents that allows the starter motor to turn the engine. All starter systems contain a switch that controls the high current traveling to the starter motor. Depending on the vehicle, this switch can either be a relay or a starter solenoid. A relay is a small black cube plugged into a fuse within the engine compartment, 
while the solenoid is typically attached directly to the starter. The starter drive includes a pinion gear set that joins with the ring gear of the engine flywheel. The ring gear is responsible for transferring the torque from the starter motor to the engine's crankshaft, which then starts the engine by turning. For safety reasons, a neutral safety switch is installed in vehicles with an automatic transmission. This switch tells the vehicle's computer which gear the vehicle is in so it knows whether to start or not. A starter motor can only be activated if the vehicle is in park or neutral. Now that we've discussed how the starter system works, let's dive into the charging system. Simply put, the charging system charges the car's battery. This supplies the electricity that powers the starter motor and other electrical accessories. The purpose of the charging system is to maintain the charge in the vehicle's battery while the engine is running. The main parts of this system are the battery, alternator, and a voltage regulating device. The battery houses the power that initially starts the engine and powers up all the vehicle's computers. The alternator converts mechanical energy into electrical energy from the power that is stored in the battery. The voltage regulator monitors the amount of electricity generated to avoid overcharging or undercharging and potentially damaging the battery or the electrical system. Now let us discuss each of these in more detail. First, an automotive battery is rechargeable and used to start the motor vehicle. If the automotive battery was a standard battery, it would run down quickly. As mentioned earlier, its main function is to provide electric current to the electrically powered starting motor, which then starts the chemically powered internal combustion engine. The battery does not house electricity, but stores the chemical energy necessary to produce electricity. The electrons react with the lead and lead dioxide plates, which changes the charge from negative to positive. When the battery's charge is depleted or dead, the starting and charging system may not function properly. If the battery is weak and the alternator is not working, the vehicle will not have the electrical power it needs to run and operate, and will shut off as a result. If the battery is dead, it does not necessarily mean something is wrong or broken. It's just drained of its charge. In most cases, it can be recharged with a battery charger or by running the engine so that the alternator can charge it. Although, when a battery is depleted of its charge, the preferred and safest method to recharge it is using a battery charger while it is disconnected from the vehicle. The battery is charged by an alternator on modern cars or by a dynamo on older ones. Both are types of generators and are powered by a belt from the engine. The main component in the charging system is the alternator. The alternator is a generator that produces voltage in an alternating current, also known as AC voltage, like what's used to power your home. Inside the alternator, this current is instantly converted via a rectifier into a direct current, also known as DC voltage. This will be our focus because most all modern automobiles have a 12 volt DC electrical system. The alternator is driven by a belt that is moved by the rotation of the engine. This belt goes around a pulley connected to the front of the engine's crankshaft and is usually responsible for powering other elements, such as the water pump, power steering pump, and air conditioning compressor. There are two main components that make up an alternator. They are the rotor and the stator. The rotor is connected directly to the alternator pulley. The dry belt rotates this pulley, which in turn spins the rotor. The rotor receives current to generate its magnetic field from the ignition switch, and then it passes through the voltage regulator. Since the rotor is spinning, the current is connected from the regulator to the spinning rotor by wires attached to two spring-loaded brushes that rub up against two slip rings on the rotor shaft. The rotor contains a powerful magnet that passes near the many wire loops that make up the stator. The magnets in the rotor are not permanent magnets, but electromagnets. 
This allows us to control how much voltage the alternator produces by regulating the amount of current that generates the magnetic field in the rotor. Now the circuits in the car are protected from excessive voltage. The stator is attached to the body of the alternator and remains immobile. There's just enough space in the middle of the stator for the rotor to fit and be able to spin without interruption. The stator contains three sets of wires that have many loops for electric current to pass through and are evenly distributed to create a three-phase system. On some systems, the wires are linked to each other at one end and are connected to a rectifier assembly on the other end. On other systems, the wires are connected to each other end-to-end, -end, and at each of the three connection points, there is also a link to the rectifier. A rectifier is an electrical device that converts an alternating current into a direct current by permitting a current to flow through it in only one direction. The voltage regulator controls the field current applied to the spinning rotor inside the alternator. When there is no current applied to the field, there is no voltage generated from the alternator. The voltage regulator can be mounted inside or outside of the alternator structure. If the regulator is mounted outside, there will be a wiring harness attaching it to the alternator. The voltage regulator controls the charging voltage that the alternator creates. It will typically keep it between 13.5 and 14.5 volts, depending on the requirements and the demand on the electrical system, and to help protect the electrical components throughout the vehicle. If the system voltage falls below the minimum threshold, the regulator will apply more current to the field and the alternator will increase the output. When the voltage surpasses the maximum threshold, the regulator will decrease the current to the field and the alternator will decrease output. Amperage, or current, is regulated by both the state of charge of the battery and the demand on the electrical system. When the battery is weak, the electromotive force, or voltage, is too weak to hold back the current from the alternator trying to recharge the battery. When the battery is fully charged, the voltage becomes strong enough to resist the current flow from the alternator and the amperage output from the alternator will drop to close to zero. When more electrical power is used, the electromotive force will reduce and alternator amperage will increase. It is extremely important that when alternator efficiency is examined, both voltage and amperage outputs are checked. Each alternator has a rated amperage output depending on the electrical requirements of the vehicle. Now let's continue the discussion around the diagnostics of the charging system. The charging system gauge, or warning lamp, monitors the condition of the charging system so that the vehicle operator is warned of a problem before it's too late. There are two types of gauges used to supervise charging systems on some vehicles. A voltmeter, which measures system voltage, and an ammeter, which measures amperage. Most modern cars that have gauges use a voltmeter because it's a much better indicator of charging system health. A mechanics voltmeter is usually the first tool a technician uses when checking out a charging system. As we touched on earlier, the modern automobile has a 12 volt electrical system. A fully charged battery will read about 12 and a half volts when the engine is off. When the engine is on, the charging system takes over so that the voltmeter will read 14 to 14 and a half volts and should stay there even if there is a heavy load on the electrical system. If the voltage dips below 12 and a half, it means that the battery is supplying some of the current. This may cause the dash lights to dim. If this happens for a prolonged period, the battery will diminish and may not have enough of a charge to start the car after shutting it off. In most cases, if the charging system voltage is above 15 volts for a prolonged period of time, there's most likely an issue in the alternator or the voltage regulator 
and the system should be tested immediately as to minimize any damage due to overcharging. When the battery is providing most of the current, thereby depleting itself, an ammeter will read as a negative amperage. A positive amperage will show if most of the current is coming from the charging system. If the battery is fully charged and there is minimal electrical demand, then the ammeter should read close to zero, but it should always be on the positive side. It's typical for the ammeter to read a high positive amperage to recharge the battery after starting, but it should taper off shortly after. If it continues to read more than 10 or 20 amps, even though the lights, wipers, and other electrical devices are turned off, the battery may be weak. If the warning lamp lights up while the engine is running, it means that there is a problem in the charging system. It could also mean the battery can no longer operate. Automotive technicians assess a vehicle's battery, charging, and starting systems to give a precise diagnosis for repair. This service gives a quick, accurate, and comprehensive evaluation of a vehicle's critical electrical systems. This service typically includes inspecting the battery, cables, case, and bracket, testing the surface charge and cold cranking amp capacity of the battery, testing the voltage draw of the starter, testing the voltage output of the alternator, and cleaning the battery terminals and connectors. The benefits of this service are, ensures the starting system is ready to go, finding a component problem before it can cause damage to another part, and it improves reliability and performance. Replacing or rebuilding the alternator is a common repair. Though alternator failures are less common on late model vehicles due to more advanced technology, a properly rebuilt alternator is as good as a new alternator and can potentially cost less than a new alternator. Always remember to disconnect the battery before replacing the alternator or doing any electrical work on a car. In some cases, if the problem is diagnosed as a bad voltage regulator, it cannot be replaced without fully disassembling the alternator. So that concludes today's lesson on the automobile's starting and charging systems. If you enjoyed learning about this topic and have a passion or interest in automotive electrical systems, then a career in the automotive repair industry might be perfect for you. According to the occupation